on, Adventure Familia. How are we doing today? It's such an honor to be here with you guys today. How many of you excited for next week, Super Bowl? Yeah? All right. So come next week in your jerseys and your favorite team jersey. And so um, if, as you guys can see, I'm very athletic and I'm really into sports, right? So I know nothing about football. So I was remembering when my husband and I were dating and we lived in L.A. and he was a youth pastor. And he said, hey, let's go to a football game. We're going to go support some of the guys. And I'm like, okay, I have no clue what's going to go on, but I'll be there as support. So we go and we're sitting there and everybody around me is starting to shout, go D, go D. And I'm thinking, okay, I need to look cool. So there's a guy named D that's on the field. One of the youth kids is named D. Okay, and everybody's yelling it out throughout the whole game, and I'm thinking, they can't all be here for the same guy. And so I look at John, and I said, hey, like, who's D? And he starts laughing, and he's like, that's defense, babe, that's defense. I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. Okay, so I'm like, go D! And I'm like, I have no clue who I'm talking about, but I'm just saying it. So it's okay, you don't have to be athletic to be here next week. Just wear anything, and we'll, we'll still take you, okay? All right, so I'd just like to thank my pastors, Pastor Anthony, Pastor Mandy, for giving me this opportunity to be here and share with you guys. And it's just amazing to have pastors that encourage you, that believe in the call in your life, and that give you the opportunities like this. And I'd like to give my husband a shout out in Overflow. Woo woo! Pastor John, love you. Thank him for his support and just for uh, believing in me as well. Uh, and so, Today, I have the opportunity to share with you about the church is. What is the church? And so as I was praying and I was asking Jesus to share a word with you, he actually gave me a dream. And so I don't know how Jesus speaks to you, but he speaks to me through dreams. And so in this dream, what he did is that he took me to this hospital. And so if you know a hospital, you know that it's made up of many departments, right? And so there's the ICU, there's a recovery center, there's a birthing room, there's all these different departments. And in my dream, he actually walked me through these different departments. And so when I woke up, I realized like, man, like this really means something. And so I, I know that Jesus was reminding me of why the church exists and why I am here at Adventure. And so that's what I'm hoping to share with you today. So let's go ahead and pray. So Jesus, I thank you for your word. I thank you what you've already been doing, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, that we would be good ground, Father, and that we would allow your word, Lord, to penetrate into our hearts, into our lives, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Kim. So how many of you guys have ever been on a road trip or even here in Fresno? And, and you've noticed on the side of the freeway that there's all these different signs, right? I hope you read the driver's ed book because there's signs on the side of the freeway. And one of these signs happens to be this blue sign with a big white H on it. And so as we all know, the H means... A hospital. And so there's a, there's a hospital nearby. And so if you're traveling or you're here in Fresno, you'll see that, hey, there's a hospital nearby, right? And so if you're in trouble, you're sick, or there's an emergency, I know where to go. I go to the hospital. And so we all go to the hospital for various of reasons. And so we sure had our, our share of, of hospital visits last year. And not because of me, but my husband decided to break down on us a couple of times. And not only once, but twice in a matter of two weeks. And so he got really, really sick. And so it all started with this pain that he got in his body. And he's like, babe, I don't feel right. I, I feel sick. And I'm like, OK, well, like on a scale of 1 through 10, like, how are you feeling? And he's like, I'm at an eight, and I'm thinking insurance and bills, and I'm like, okay, you'll be fine, okay? It's an eight. It's at an eight. You're okay right now. And so as the days went by, he kept get this pain kept getting stronger and stronger to the point where he's like sweating, and I'm thinking, okay, he's not at a 10 yet. I don't think he's at a 10. And he finally says, I need a hospital now. And so I said, okay, he's on the verge of death. Let's go. So we end up in the, in the urgent care, and we're in the hospital, and, and I'm sitting there, and we're waiting, and I start looking all around, and I see all these sick people, because sick people go to the hospital. And there was just different kinds of sicknesses, and some people you could tell were in a lot of pain, others were just super quiet, and, and in my mind, I just begin to get all these thoughts, like, 
there's sick people here. Like they probably haven't showered in a week and, and they smell. And I'm probably sitting on someone who's sick, like some, someone's seat, they were sick and I'm sitting on it and I'm getting contaminated. And oh, all these thoughts just come, started coming into my mind. And I completely forgot why we were actually there. Like my husband is on the verge of death. He himself is probably stinky and he's dying. And I'm over here thinking like, oh, everybody else was bothering me. And so uh, uh, something that, that God revealed to me after, after my dream was like, hey, sick people go to the hospital. You can't expect to find anything different. It's going to be messy in there. And so what he was reminded me is making that connection between a church that in the same way that a hospital provides services for sick people, like we as a church, we're like a hospital. Like sick people come in here. You can't expect to see anything different. And so anytime you're driving around and you see a cross on a church, there's many, many churches, the thought that comes to our mind is, hey, there's a place I can get help at, right? You think of a church and there's a cross. Hey, there is where I could probably find love. I could find acceptance. And so God was bringing, making me have that connection between a church and a hospital. And so what if we began to see the church as a hospital? How easily we can forget why the church exists. A broken world needs a place to bring its spiritual injuries. And people need an emergency room, not a courtroom. People want healing, not judgment. And so how is the church like a hospital? Well, the first way that the church is a hospital is you can find forgiveness here. And so I'm going to lend you guys in on a little secret. Or Did you guys know that, that sinners come to church? Okay, I know this sounds a little funny, and some of you may be surprised, right? But we forget this sometimes, that when we show up to church, we, we, we may... Find people that may look a little different, that maybe even smell a little different, right? And that maybe are living a little bit differently than you. But how are we treating them? How are we inviting them in? Are we making them feel accepted? Are we making them feel like, hey, come on in. I'm so happy to see you. Because I'll raise my hand. I've had those thoughts before. Because I know you've never had those thoughts before, right? And so Jesus came for the sinner, and we all need forgiveness. No one is exempt. And so there's a story in Mark 2, 13 through 17 that I want to share with you. And it says, Then Jesus went out to the lakeshore again and taught the crowds that were coming to him. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners. There were many of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when the teachers of religious law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with such scum? In my mind, I play little stories, and so in my mind it read, why does he eat with such scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor, sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. And so I know there's a lot that we can take from this story, but what I'm trying to show you here is that Jesus himself knew why he had come, and he knew who he had come for. And so here, he's being criticized for doing something that the church should have been doing all along, and yet they weren't doing it. They should have been a hospital for the sinners, and that's something they weren't doing themselves. And so may we may not be like the Pharisees, those church leaders who walked around acting holy and righteous while looking down and criticizing sinners, when in all actuality, we're all in need of the same thing. We're all in need of a Savior. We are all in need of forgiveness. And so for them... The law was everything. They followed it to a T. And so when you compare them to the law, no one came close to following as close as the Pharisees did. But what they failed to see is that, yes, the law could discover sin, but one thing that it could not do is remove it. And so as the Lord reminded me of this, 
he was telling me only the blood of Jesus removes sin. And so aren't we thankful for that blood of Jesus today? So as the Lord brought me back to that hospital room in my dream, he reminded me that if I wasn't careful, I too could become like the Pharisees, sitting in church, coming for years, and seeing, my, seeing others and looking down at others who come in through the doors in the same way. And so for me, I was thinking, oh my gosh, Jesus, like I repent if I've, if I've been thinking that way. And may I not, may not be in the way of adventure, being a place for the hurting, for the broken, and for the sick. Because because the same way that it accepted me when I came in is the same way that I want to accept and extend that love and that welcoming to others who come in through those doors. And may we never say, there is no room for you here. There is room for everybody here today. And so just a little bit about my life. I grew up in church pretty much all my life. And so this, I can relate to this story a lot because I grew up thinking that I was holy. I grew up thinking I was righteous. And in my mind, how dare a drunk walk into our church? How dare a drug addict walk into our church and mess up this all holy thing that's going on in here, not realizing that I was in need of a savior as well, that I was in need of forgiveness. And what does Romans 3.23 say? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is exempt, and no sin is greater than others. We all need forgiveness. And so here at Adventure, may we say what Romans 3.24 says, Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. And may we say to others today, you have that opportunity to experience the freedom from your sins because of what Jesus did on the cross. And so the second thing is that the church is a hospital that has people who can help us. There's this song by uh, Hezekiah Walker. If, you, if you're into gospel music, go ahead and look him up. But there's this song that says, I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. And so what does that song talk about? It talks about people. We need people. We need each other. And so if you don't like people, you've come to the right place. And if you like people... It makes it easier for us to love on you, right? And so our love is so contagious that you won't be able to help yourself but just be loved, right? Come here. Let me give you a hug. Okay. It's just we love people. And so we all came in broken, hurt, and wounded, right? But we didn't stay that way. We may have been in the ICU for a little bit, but we recovered, right? And then we went to the wellness center. And in this wellness center, we're learning how to grow. We're learning how to walk this journey of life together, right? And so it talks about people. We can't get healing on our own. And so sometimes we think that we can come and we can hide and we don't have to share with anybody our hurts, our brokenness, right, our sin. But in reality, God did this on purpose. He created the church because there's people in the church that can help you, that can walk this journey of life with you. And so my perception of the church, when, when we came to Adventure eight years ago, I had a bad perception of church. We had been hurt, we had been backstabbed, and we were bitter. And my perception was, they'll backstab you. It's only a matter of time. Church people smile at you, but on the inside, they're criticizing you already. And so when we came to Adventure, we met all these amazing people. Well, seven people, because there wasn't a lot of people at the time. But everyone that was there loved on us, and they took us to the ICU center, and we were there bleeding, and we were hurt, and we were broken, and all they did was love on us. And when I said, I don't want your love, it's fake, they would love on us even more. <laughs> I don't want you to love on me. You're going to backstab me. They loved me even more into the point where I was able to, to receive that healing that I needed, and I was able to go to the, to the recovery room, and then 
from there, I went to the wellness center, and I'm standing here before you, healed from the brokenness, and I'm telling you today, that same love, that same healing is available for you today. But you have to allow people into your life. And so maybe some of you can, can relate to this in many ways. Maybe some of you come from other churches where you've been hurt and you've been broken. Or maybe you've never been to church, but you've been broken and you've been hurt by other people, right? By loved ones, by family, by friends who said they were going to be there, right? That same invitation is extended out to you today. God did this on purpose to show us the necessity of why we must allow people into our lives and so if we don't allow that healing to happen, how can we go out and tell other people that there's this awesome church that accepts people just as they are and that will love on them when we ourselves are not allowing for that healing to happen, right? So today, allow that healing process to begin in your life through people. And so here in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12, it says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. But how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Here at Adventure, you're going to find people that have walked a lap or two ahead of you, right? And they have, and, and lean into their wisdom, lean into their experience, because what they have to say is truth. And so our spiritual leaders, they're constantly seeking God. And they can give you direction in whatever circumstances is happening in your life. They can give you that direction because our spiritual leaders, they're like those doctors, right? How many of you have gone to the doctor before and told them, I'm sick and this is what I need. I need this medication. I need this and I need that. We don't because we're not the experts, right? In the same way, your spiritual leaders are going to give you exactly what you need. Because trust me, sometimes we can't even help ourselves, right? And we, we may think we know what we need, but in reality, we can't even help ourselves. And so I want to encourage you guys that having people around you can help you in your healing process. And so the last thing is the church is a hospital where we give birth. And so we can lose sight of this when you think of a church. And so when we think of a church being a hospital, we may think, okay, the sick, the dying, the hurt, the broken, yes, it is definitely a hospital for those people. But in the same way, if you really think about it, there's one department that no one ever complains about going to. And that is the birthing floor, right? Oh, the joy of being able to go and visit a loved one and a friend who just uh, had a baby, right? And to celebrate that moment with them, that joyous moment of having a baby. And so how many of you moms remember being pregnant? And how many of you dads remember your wives being pregnant? Don't say she was a nightmare, okay? For the sake of the message, say it was beautiful, okay? It was a joyous time. So from the moment you found out you were pregnant, you didn't want to just keep it to yourself. You wanted to go and tell everybody, right? You, and you went to the doctor to confirm it. And you got the little uh, ultrasound with the little bean right there. There's my baby, right? And you wanted to just share with everybody because you wanted everyone to share this joyous time with you. And you read all the books. And, and, and you looked up in your app, oh, week by week, this is where my, how big my baby is. And to hearing your baby's heartbeat, to finding out that you're having a boy, that you're having a girl, that you're having twins. Oh, my gosh. But that really does happen, right? But all the waiting for nine months until the day that the labor, the di labor day begins. And, and you give birth to the most beautiful baby. What a joyous time, right, of being able to share that moment with everybody else. Pregnancy isn't a journey to walk out on your own. And it takes a lot of involvement from different people, right? And so in the same way, God births things in our hearts, and sometimes we don't even know what to do with them, right? And so I'd like to call the worship team up. Well, let me share what you can do with these things that God births in your heart.
The church, Adventure Church, provides a place to give birth to the plan and vision and purpose that God has placed in your heart. And I'm sure you're all familiar with all 26 adventure ways, right? And one of them is dream big. We will allow the breath of the Holy Spirit to speak to us and direct adventure to dream the impossible, believe the unattainable, and achieve the dream. We do a lot with a little and expect the impossible because our God is always faithful. So guess what, guys? You can give birth here. Not literally, spiritually, okay? You can give birth here. We want to partner with you, and we want to walk this journey with you as you discover the purpose for your life, as you discover the plan and the vision that God has set for you. We want to celebrate with you as you give birth to what Jesus has placed inside of your heart. And so what I didn't tell you at the beginning of my message was that in my dream, I was actually in labor and I was pregnant and I was about to give birth. And I kept being taken to different parts of the hospital and in every room that they would wheel me into, it wasn't the right room. And I kept saying, no, this isn't the right room. I'm gonna have my baby in the wrong room. And they wheeled me off to the ICU room. And I kept saying, this is not the right room. I need to get to the birthing place. I need to get to where the right place is so that I could give birth to this beautiful baby. And so finally I get wheeled into this room and I'm left in there and I'm thinking man I'm going to give birth in this in this place that's not even a birthing room and there lo and behold I see my husband on a white stallion no just kidding he came in in my dream and he says babe don't worry, I'm going to take you to the right place. And as he, he's wheeling me away, I get this sense of peace knowing that I finally was going to the right place that I was belonging in to give birth to this beautiful, beautiful baby. And in the same way, I want to tell you that you have a place here at Adventure and that together we want you to discover where you're best fit in. Don't get stuck in the labor phase and never really give birth to what Jesus has placed inside of your heart. Keep dreaming, keep believing. And those things that have been stirring up inside of you, you just keep believing, you share it, and we will celebrate with you and we will walk with you as you discover your purpose here at Adventure Church. And so we want you to be able to give birth in the exact place that Jesus wants you. So come and partner with us and dream big and partner Partner with what's happening here at Adventure because believe it or not, you're all pregnant, okay? So I want to end on this thought. So if we know that the church is a place where people can come and find forgiveness, and if we know that the church is a place where people can come and they can give birth to the purpose and the plan that Jesus has for them, and if we know that the church is a place where there's people that genuinely love you, what does all this mean? Well, next Sunday, we are having one of the biggest events of the year here at Adventure, and that is Super Bowl Sunday. And so we are anticipating hundreds of new visitors. And this is a prime opportunity for you to invite those loved ones, those friends, those neighbors to come and experience the same thing that you experienced when you first walked in through these doors. And you probably already know who you're going to invite. But I want to challenge you. I want you to think about those people that you know are going to say no. Those are the people that I want you to invite as well. Invite those who have you given up on. Who is that person that you keep inviting that keeps saying no to you? And you're just, okay, it doesn't even matter. Those are the exact people that you need to go and invite. Because if you don't put that invitation out, who's going to tell them about the joy that you found here at Adventure? right? And so as you read the Gospels, you're going to notice that when Jesus invited Peter, when he invited James, when he invited John to come and follow him, he didn't tell them, accept me in your heart first and then come follow me. He didn't say that to them. He said, come follow me because Jesus knew that if they followed him, then they would accept him in their hearts. And so in other words, 
You need to put out that invitation and then you're going to get your expectation. But if you don't put out the invitation, how are they going to know that adventure is a hospital where they can find forgiveness? How are they going to know that adventure is a place where they can find true love? How are they going to find a place? How will they ever know that there's a place here where real people have real problems and there's real solutions for their problems? There's real solutions for their sickness. How are they ever going to know? And how are these people ever going to know that there is a plan, that there's a vision, that there is something birthing inside of them that Jesus wants to place inside of them and give them that hope for tomorrow? How are they ever going to know if we give up on them and we don't invite them? And so as you're sitting there today and the Holy Spirit is depositing and he's showing you faces of people and he's giving you those names, be bold and be courageous and you go make that invitation. Hello fam, Anthony here, Senior Pastor of Adventure Church. I hope you were blessed by that message. Let me give you a few next steps for you to follow. Number one, if you do not have a local church, I would strongly encourage you to find one. We know that the kingdom will be blessed by your presence and they'll give you an opportunity to serve on a dream team. If you don't know of a local church in your area and you need help, we would love to assist you with that. Please email us or DM us and we would love to give you information for you to get involved. Second, Please, as much as we would enjoy having your tithe dollars, it belongs in the local church. If you'd like to send us an offering, we'd be thankful and appreciative, but we would love for you to tithe to your local church so we can do a great work in your community. Step three, hey, if you don't have a Bible and we can help with that, uh, we would love to send us an email, send us a direct message. We'd love to send you a Bible. Or if you have a smartphone, do not wait, do not hesitate. Go to the app section and download a Bible today. Start reading it. We know that it's going to bless your socks. Also, if you enjoy these messages, do us a favor, pass them along and, and just continue to watch them. And, and please bring a friend or two and let them know how much this ministry has blessed you guys. We look forward to continuing to partner with you along your spiritual journey. God bless you guys and tune in soon.